God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. He that believeth on the Son has everlasting life. He that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abiding upon him. The Bible says that there is a heaven. That's the good news. The Bible says there's also a hell. That's the bad news. And man will be put into hell by rejecting God's gift, the Lord Jesus Christ, as their Savior. The wrath of God is the lake of fire for refusing what Jesus Christ has done for us. As I turn in the scriptures, show you out of the Bible that God has a particular plan that does not match our plans. It does not match religion. And to who are troubled rest with us when the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels, and flaming fire taking vengeance on them that know not God, and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power. They have not obeyed the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let me tell you what that gospel is. That gospel is that Christ Jesus came into this world, virgin born. He came and was born to die upon Calvary's tree. He came and died for sinners. Being sinless himself without sin, no fault could be found in him. He still shed his blood upon the cross and died. That's part one of the gospel of three parts. That Christ took our sins upon the cross. Part two is they buried him in the grave, just as you would with any dead person. They put him in a cave, they sealed that cave, they locked it, they put a guard on it, he's entombed. And the third part, the final part of the gospel, is that Jesus Christ arose from the dead, victorious. The Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world is no longer dead, but seated at the right hand of the Father. The gospel is that Christ died for our sins, he was buried, and he arose again the third day according to the scriptures. No other man has ever accomplished such a feat. No other person, angel, or being could pay for our sins as God has sought his Son. God is not willing that any should perish. He's long-suffering. He does not want to put you into hell. But your own disobedience, your own decision to not trust Jesus Christ, will put you into a devil's hell. Hell was made for Satan and his angels. And since man, <coughs> since man rebels against God, there is a penalty. The wages of sin is death. The fact is that we are going to die proves we are sinners. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God's eternal life through Jesus Christ. You can die, and yet you still can have God's eternal life. You say, what must I do to be saved? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved, the Bible says. 
Now being saved, you're still going to die. But you will not enter into the gates of hell, you'll enter into the realm of God the Father. Being saved and dying, the body says, be absent from the body and present with the Lord. As instant you pass from this earth, you'll pass to God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, whom you have believed. But rejecting Jesus Christ, not, not taking the offering that God has put His only begotten Son, you will be dead, you will bury, and you will open your eyes, the Bible says, in hell, being in torment, tormenting, and tormented for all eternity. The wrath of God is because you have not seek Jesus Christ as your Savior, as Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. So you cannot get to heaven unless you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior. Your religion, your own beliefs, your pocketbook cannot get you to, to God's realm. For God so loved the world that He gave. God has done the giving. God has done the act that you need to get to heaven. That is by the love, the love of the Lord Jesus Christ. It is not by works. At least any man should boast. Salvation is truly and fully wrought on the finished work and merit of Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone. Friend, let me tell you, if you think that your church, your belief, whatever you think outside of Jesus Christ can get you into heaven, you are proclaiming yourself to be God Himself. Because only God died on that tree. Only God was buried. Only God arose from the dead. And when you say you can do something better than that, you are putting yourself in God. And you will face the wrath of God by blaspheming the finished gospel work of Jesus Christ by saying, I'm better than Jesus. And you're a fool. You cannot fulfill anything in God being a sinner. And yet Christ Jesus, sinless, could be fulfilled, forbid all the law, please the Father every moment of all eternity. Jesus pleased the Father. Even as a saved, born-again Christian, I don't always please the Father. I am still a sinner, saved by grace. Jesus never sinned and yet took the sin of us and nailed it to that cross by His blood, which is the blood of God, Acts 20, 28. See, so you need blood to be washed. And I don't mean going out shedding blood. I am telling you about the shed blood that was shed by Jesus Christ upon that cross for our sins. Isaiah 53 speaks about the suffering Messiah. The Messiah, the Son of God, that put all in all that we will have the offering of eternal life. And if God sent His Son that was bruised and beaten and spit and mistreated and nailed to the cross, what on earth can you do to better improve God's salvation? You will stand in your works trembling in fear before the God that died and did it all for you. 
Behold the Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world. You got to have a lamb. You got to have the lamb. And that lamb, the Bible says, has to be your lamb. Approved of God. A lamb that was examined to be perfect. And the lamb that laid its life down and shed his blood for sin. That lamb is the Lord Jesus Christ. We know the little poem. Mary had a little lamb. Its fleece was white as snow. That's about the Lord Jesus Christ. That lamb, that little ewe, that little baby that's going to be born in Mary, in Bethlehem, was born in Bethlehem to die at Calvary for our sin. That baby grew up to die for our sin. That baby came for the purpose of man's sin. That baby who is God had a purpose. God who had a purpose because we have no remedy of ourselves for our own sin. If we could pay for our sin, you would hate God because you would not have Christmas. Because if I could pay for my own sins, Jesus would never have been born. He would not need to be born if I could do it. And if it wasn't for your celebration of, of Christmas and Jesus, your credit card companies wouldn't be happy because you want to go out and buy all your junk and all your gifts around Christmas, but yet you do not give one gift to God, Jesus Christ. You will not take the gift of God at Christmas, which is the Lord Jesus Christ. Yet, but you think of yourself and buy yourself presents, and never mind the gift of God, which is eternal life to Jesus Christ our Lord. And I will go so far to tell you that this Christmas has nothing to do with Jesus Christ. It is the worship of Baal. It is the worship of paganism. Jesus was not born on December 25th. That's a religious lie. If you have a Jesus of December 25th, you got the wrong Jesus. For Paul said there will be another Jesus. You better have the biblical Jesus. You better not have a fat guy that breaks down in your house and steals your cookies. That's a thief. You better have Jesus over Satan Claus. Satan Claus brings gifts. Jesus Christ is the gift of God. Jesus Christ, who is of God, born of God, the Son of God, is the only means of salvation by God. For he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Santa Claus cannot be your savior. He's a glutton. He's a fat guy. He can't control his appetite. That's a sin. Jesus was sinless. You don't even know what you celebrate. You're taking God's Thanksgiving and put it to football and spending money you ain't got. And you don't pay attention to the Word. You don't even know the history of Thanksgiving. It was wrought by God to saving a bunch of men seeking to get away from religious persecution and thanking God for the providence of one harsh winter that they had. You are to be thankful for what God has done for you by sending His Son. Thanksgiving. And you ought to receive that gift, Christmas, that God has given you, the Lord Jesus Christ. You 
you people celebrate the gospel and you don't even know it. Easter is supposed to be the time that Christ arose from the grave. That's part of the gospel. Christmas. He's supposed to have been born, which he wasn't, but Christmas. He's born of a virgin, Mary. That's part of the gospel. Thanksgiving, to give all glory and honor to God the Father for all that he has done. July 4th, the independence that we can get from God from sin and death by Jesus Christ. Labor Day, to go out in all the world and preach the gospel. Valentine's Day, that God is love. New Year's Day, when we get that new creature by believing on the Lord Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit coming down in us. See, I can take those pagan holidays and I can show you the Lord Jesus Christ. I can take that Christmas tree and show you Calvary's tree where Christ hung on a tree and died for your sins. I can show you those white lights of purity of God being sinless. The Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world. I can show you the red light showing of your sin. The blood of Jesus Christ cleanses from all sin. The yellow light, gold, deity, one of the gifts that were brought to Jesus. King Jesus. Green, life. Life is wrought in the Son of God, Jesus Christ, and Jesus Christ alone. The water that you put the tree, where Jesus said, I am the water, I am the water of life. Any man come to me, he'll never thirst again. The presence. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God's eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. It's cold around Christmas time, so you can get a comforter by God, the Holy Spirit, by believing on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. But let me tell you one restful, historical fact that you will need to know. Jesus Christ is not part of the season. He was not born on December 25th. You are worshiping a pagan holiday, and God says the second commandment, you're not to worship idolatry. So with that tree, and those gifts, and the pretty bulbs, you are violating God, and now you need a Savior to be washed from your sins. And I hope I'm ruining your Christmas so you will come to Christ to be saved. The Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world. Nowhere in the Bible does it say where Jesus was born. And yet the Bible tells you, ye must be born again. Your first birth that you have, you were born as a sinner from your parents, Adam and Eve. You are a sinner by birth. And like Christ, you are born to die. But Christ was born to die for our sins. You are born to die in your sins unless you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior. And you will die. And you will face an eternity. But the Bible eternity is heaven or hell. There's nothing else. You're either with glory by Jesus Christ, or you are in hell by anything else. What must I do to go to heaven? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, how do I go to hell? Anything what? To do it. You don't have to do anything. You can do something. But to avoid hell is by believing and putting your sins upon the Lord Jesus Christ and His shed blood. A man can't do that. You can't do it. Your wallet can't do it. Your church can't do it. Only Jesus Christ saves. Jesus saves alone. Religion is man-made, and yet Jesus Christ...
Christ is God approved. You, in order to get to heaven, you have to, you have to have something you do not have. Righteousness. If I were to die right now and stand before God, God would say, where's your righteousness? Well, in me, I have none. My righteousness that I do have is in Jesus Christ. Everything that needs to be done to get to God has been done by Jesus Christ, and that is the righteousness that you need. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. That is the credentials that God wants. He wants His Son. He wants you to have His Son's righteousness by belief. For with the heart man believes on the righteousness, with the mouth confessions made unto salvation. He wants you to put your faith and your trust in the one that was virgin born of Israel, a Jewish man, who is God and is man, sinless perfection, and God's offering for sin, that you might be saved. And there will be no other. There is no other. Salvation today in the church age is wrought by Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone. And then some of you will say, oh, you're not preaching love. That is love. Love is Jesus Christ. Christ loved you that he suffered, bled, and died that you might have life. And have life more abundantly. He that believeth on the Son hath life. He that believeth not on the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God. People, you need to realize if you're... Rejecting Jesus Christ will bring wrath, not love. Mocking what the Word of God says. Despising what the Word of God says week after week. You are adding wrath of God. He may not send a tornado. He may not send a hurricane. He may not give you a hundred volts of electricity, but He will give you hell if you reject His Son. And you will never come out. Hell is so disgraceful that God Himself came down and suffered and bled and died that we might have a way out. And yet week after week after week we, we stand here and we preach the word and you reject. One day if you continue to rebel against God you're going to wish you had listened. If you have believed in the Lord Jesus Christ you will be pleased on that day that you received Him as your Savior. You might ask, why are you doing this? Why do you come here and I... Because the Bible says, go ye to all the world and preach the gospel. 
Believe in God. This is the you hate it, but this is the love of God that we are bringing you the gospel week after week. I don't have to do this. God is not forcing me. I could just back up and go and say nothing. But I desire your souls to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. I desire that you hear the truth of God to believe. And like in 1987 in April, my name was put in the Lamb's Book of Life of Eternal Life. As your name can be put down now. Many of you here probably never been or never will ever enter a church and hear a message like this. That's why we bring it to you. That's why we come out with the gospel because you're not going to go to church. And 99% of the churches here in Daytona Beach, you're not going to hear the gospel. You'll walk out of that church just as lost as lost, lost of the message is. We bring to you that Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Only Jesus saves. And to you who are troubled, rest with us when the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels. Jesus is coming. That baby that was born in Bethlehem, that little lamb, is coming back. And you're not going to put him in a manger. You're not going to put diapers on him. Because he's coming back as a lion in the tribe of Judah. An angry lion. Seeking to devour you that reject what he has done for you. Who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord. Well, let's go see what John said. Turn to see what John had to say about this. Everlasting destruction. He that believeth on the Son has everlasting life. He that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abiding upon him. Flamen ve taking vengeance on them that know not God. Wrath, vengeance. The Bible says that God says, Vengeance is mine, I will repay. Who shall be punished with an everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord. You know, you don't want God? That's perfectly fine. In eternity, you'll never see God again when He catches you out in the lake of fire. But once you're in that lake of fire, oh, you're going to wish you were back in His presence. See, you are in the presence of God right now when I open up this Bible. In the beginning was the Word, the Word was God, the Word was with God. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. You are standing in the presence of God when I open the King James Bible. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall never pass away, Jesus said. These words are eternal, as with your soul. Now you adhere to what the Word says, you can be saved eternally. You reject what these words say, and you could be damned, wrath of God, vengeance, damnation, for all eternity, 
destruction away from God in His presence. And the question is, well, what do I do to be saved? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. You know, the same one that gave you all these fruits and vegetables is also offering to you eternal life. It's not these farmers. It's Father God that blessed us with all this vegetation. Adam was a husbandman and still needs blood to be washed from his sins. As God sacrificed the first sheep to cover, to cover the nakedness of Adam and Eve. This farmer's market goes all the way back to Genesis chapter 3. You know, you are in the condition that you are right now because Adam and Eve ate a fruit that they weren't supposed to. God said, do not eat of that fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Well, Adam disobeyed. He ate it. Now we're in the condition we are in because of rebelling against God. Now God says, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. You're not listening. You're not obeying. And God will say, okay, fine, I'll take you out of my presence and cast you in the lake of fire which burns forever. You see, Adam and Eve were driven out of the garden of paradise, Eden, because of their disobedience in the word of God. You will be cast out of the presence of God like he did with Adam and Eve into the lake that burns forever by disobeying what God said. Don't eat that fruit. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Man always disobeys against God. It seems in our nature that what God says to do, we don't. And what God says not to do, we do. And that proves you're a sinner. That proves that you are rebelling against God. So, you can believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and be saved. Or, you can reject the Lord Jesus Christ and disobey God like Adam did and be put off from his presence forever. Going to heaven is by Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone. That's it. There's no other. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Death is coming. Death is sure. And it's sure that salvation is wrought by Jesus, and it's sure if you reject Jesus, you'll get the wrath of God. 